Welcome to Ask GMBN, the time of week where we get to attack the burning questions that are eating you up and you just got to know an answer. And this is your chance. Yes, you guys have been leaving comments down below using the hashtag Ask GMBN and even sending them in on our social media platforms. So you ready to answer some questions? Let's get into it. Okay, the first one is from David Brown fan. Does anyone have any tips to get rid of upper back pain? I hurt my back, but it hasn't healed over the week. And he really wants to get out riding this weekend. Oh, I know the feeling, yeah. Um, well, it's really interesting actually, because your upper back is very different to your neck in terms of structure and your lower back. Uh, there's a lot of muscle there because it's protecting internal organs and it is helping you stand upright, basically. It's for support. So the problem is probably muscular. Um, I would say if it's quite isolated, I'd try icing that area a little bit or maybe try a nice hot bath. Basically, you want to try and loosen those muscles off so you get rid of the pain. Wow, Dr. Ashton really <laughs> coming to play on this question. Yes, yeah, I've had some injuries. And I tell you what, we could just say as well, if it's really bad, then go and seek some medical advice. Yes. Perhaps yes. a physiotherapist Look to get a massage or something like that, just to loosen you up and you'll be back on the bike having fun. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Okay, Manuel Lazardi is asking, I bought a bike that has mechanical disc brakes, how can I adjust them? Uh, well, mechanical discs aren't ever going to adjust quite as well as a hydraulic disc because it's a cable, you're going to get some stretch and that's going to need readjustment as you ride over time. But you can actually do some adjusting still, even yeah. though that it's not hydraulic, you can centre that disc brake. And then once that your cable is stretched a little bit, just play mm. with those barrel adjusters that are on the lever itself to really get it dialed in and get it feeling really solid. I actually have to say, mm. I still quite like the feel of mechanical disc brake. It still feels yeah, pretty good. Yeah, well, once you've got it set up, and like I say, once you've played those little barrels, you can usually get it working yeah. nice and tight. And David Schmolly is asking, is it better to upgrade parts or save up for a completely new bike? Oh, blimey, that's a hard one. There's not enough information. It really depends. Sometimes just a, a, a adding a new bit to your bike can make a big difference or cheaper items. But once you start getting onto the more expensive components, then you have got to start weighing up the cost, basically. You have, but I tell you what, there's no better feeling than using some of your savings mm. and going out and buying a few parts, upgrading it, and it can learn so much about yeah. actually mountain bike parts, fitting them, riding them, and feeling the differences. Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, even just, even just adding like a pair of new grips can absolutely transform the way your bike feels and that will transform the way you feel about riding it. I'm definitely 50-50 on this one, but let's throw them to a video. It's all about top 10 parts you should upgrade and in the order of importance. Upgrading your bike as you can afford it is a great way of improving your bike, but also making it suit you a little bit better. Obviously, there's lots of variables involved in what to upgrade and how much to spend, but we're going to give you a bit of an idea as to how important we think each component is to the overall performance of your bike. Right, next question is from Ben Roberts. Um, I want to do a junior downhill race, but I only have a cross-country mountain bike um, and I can't afford a full suspension bike. What should I do? I'm going to say they need to do some more paper rounds, get a job <laughs> in a bike shop perhaps as well, where you can get discount on parts, discount on bikes, and that will all add up and just make it a little bit more viable to perhaps purchase a full suspension bike for mm. racing downhill. I mean, you could, in theory, turn up yeah. to a race on a cross-country bike, but... You know, I'm, I'm, yeah. am I allowed to disagree? Am I allowed? I, I would say go along to a race on the bike you've got and have a go. See if you like it. But I mean, Scott's right. You've got yeah. to get that full size bike to develop. But, I mean, what is cool yeah. about some of the regional races is when they actually have hardtail categories. So you can take that cross country bike in, slam the saddle, get a shorter stem. That would be perfect. And you can go for it. Look for one of them. That's yeah. the perfect answer. David Mahan, um, how low pressure can I drop in my tubeless tires? Ooh. Now, I'd say that really depends on where you're riding because you'd yeah. be, you should be adjusting your tyre pressure to the grip you need on the trail you're on. Yeah. So I think it's a matter of experimentation. It's hard to say one pressure. Um, sometimes I used to run my tyres nearly flat on some terrains really? because I yeah, get I real long trials you know, yeah. to get extra grip. But um, on mountain bike, I always think start at a good base pressure. I mean, depending on your weight, I'm going to say I'm 75 kilograms and I generally run 26 PSI in the front, 29 in the rear. And I work from that point, sort of putting a little bit more pressure if I yeah. feel that they're squirming, or if I want more grip, then I take some pressure out. So maybe just start at base point and work from there. Yeah, have a play with it. Okay, Marek Wolan. This year, for the first time, I'm going to ride clip pedals, but I'm afraid to do bunny hops. Do you have any advice? Oh, 
That's an interesting well, one. Well, that's sort of around the wrong... I would usually think that it would be scary you're going to do bunny hops without your clips, because it's yeah. easier to bunny hop with clips. Clip pedals so, are almost like that fake bunny hop, aren't they, where you can yeah. actually just use the jump. pedal, and you can just <laughs> jump up on the bike, and the bike will lift up. On flat yeah. pedals, you really have to have the correct technique. Drop those hips back and really fire forwards. That's yeah. how you're going to get that back wheel up. And then if you're not doing it right, there's also a thing on flat pedals, your foot slipping off the pedal. Yeah, and yeah, flat pedals yeah. and shins, they're Not nasty. Good, you know. But you know what? To help you out, we can take a quick look at our beginner's guide to using clipless pedals. As a beginner, clipping in consistently can be really difficult. You might find that your foot goes too far forward and slides off the front of the pedal. Over time, you will learn to feel where the cleat is on the shoe and be able to locate it far more easily. Andrew Cook wants to know how much have downhill bikes changed since Neil was racing? <laughs> well, I think that Neil stopped racing in 2009, so yep, that's then, yeah. eight years ago. I guess the biggest change has got to be wheel size. Who would have thought yeah. that you'd be racing 26 inch wheels back then? Now yeah. it's all about 650B and 29ers. Yeah, and I guess also geometry's changed an awful lot. A lot longer um, wheelbase, slacker head angles. Yeah, bigger, um, higher riser bars too. Yeah, um, yeah. Suspension, I guess, is almost the same. Yeah. You've still got 200 mil of travel. Yeah, but, but then much better suspension. Much better, yeah, much yeah. More you've progressive. got low, yeah. high speed compression, rebound control, it's so much more dialed. So actually, yeah. thinking about it. In summary, a lot. A lot, yeah. 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 <laughs> okay, Martin, this question is for you. It's from Sumo's and Jeremy says, can I use a dirt jumper for trial stuff like street trials? Oh, for sure, for sure. The great thing about trials is you can use any bike, any bike. That is a rule of trials, you can use any bike. I used to do trials on a rally burner, BMX. Did you? Yeah, because that was all I had. Um, trials can be so many different things. It can be balancing on the spot. It can be, it's whatever you decide. I'm gonna ride over that, you're doing trials. So any bike, definitely. Definitely. Jump bike could do it. Have you got any setup tips for him maybe? If he's, got, he's obviously got a dirt jump bike, so could he change yeah. anything to make it easier for him? Well, one problem you might have that's gonna make it a little bit hard is you might only have one brake if you're on a dirt jump bike, but that True. still doesn't mean you can't do trials. It just yeah. means you've got to adjust your riding to work out the scenario. But yeah, I would definitely say get the saddle down nice and low. Um, maybe raise your levers up a little bit just so you can reach them easier if you're going down something steep. Having said that, Danny Mack rides his bikes with his levers slammed right down under. Okay, so that advice you don't need to listen to. There's no rules. There's no yeah. rules. Slam the seat. Oh well. Okay, the <laughs> next question is from Tom Archer and he says, is a rise on handlebars important and of what effect does it have? Well, it changes your body position. Um, a riser bar will put you further over the rear of the bike, changes your cockpit setup. Um, really good thing to play with, I think. Um, yeah. Trying to rise a bike and transform your bike. Um, make manuals a lot easier um, oh, because you'll be maybe further I over get the some rear. Riser bars, though. <laughs> Less pedal. That's something you can manual. This guy can manual. Um, yeah, um, what do you think about riser bars? Yeah, riser bars, I'm kind of all for them. I like having the stem as slammed to the fork as I can down to that head tube and then yeah. having riser bars to compensate for having it a little bit lower. Yeah. So, in my eyes, they're a good thing. Yeah, okay. Von Poupes is asking, how often do you guys adjust your suspension settings? Well, that's one for you, Scotty. What would you say? You're out on the trail so much. What yeah, well, do? we were discussing this a little while ago, yeah, weren't we? Yeah. And I said to you, I change it quite a lot. Yeah, Listen, no, you, know, you said you change it every day. Every, every day. Yeah, not every day in the sense, only when I ride my bike. So if I'm yes. out on the trails and I might think, oh, <laughs> maybe a little bit of a low speed compression click can help with this, or changing yeah. the rebound can help with that. And I'm always just experimenting, yeah. having little ideas, thinking, could that help here? Could I go faster? What's the bike doing? And I'm really thinking about how the bike is working with the ground to get absolutely dialed in. Yeah, so I guess it's about experimentation. If you find that you're adjusting it every day like Scott and you're just going into the garage for no reason and adjusting it while it's sat in a garage, then that's some sort of obsessive compulsive yeah, disorder. Yeah, I don't do that. Yeah. And you should go and see someone about it. And I tell you what, one tip is that you should actually just always note those changes that they're doing. So if it doesn't work out and it feels terrible, you can go back to where you started. There you go, base and, settings. And let's just throw into a video all about seven common suspension mistakes. Woo, that trail was amazing, so flowy. That was rough for me. I tell you what, the back end was skipping all over the place. Suspension's still locked out, you idiot. Oh, rookie. That must have been though, why I was so fast up that climb. 
As a pro racer, something that I really experimented and spent a lot of time testing was my suspension. It can have a massive effect on how much grip and how you can track through the rougher sections. Yeah, pro racers often learn how to set their suspension up by trying lots of different things, but also learning the hard way by doing it wrong. These are the top seven most common suspension setup mistakes. It's time for the quick fire round. Clear! Well done, mate. Okay, let's kick off. Right, first question. T.S. DeVos says, what do I do when I have a little bit of a chip in my paint on my bike frame? Ooh, probably nothing It happens, doesn't it? And it's just that thing. You go out riding, you get a scratch, you have a cry about it, and then you go out riding again. No problem. Leonardo Prado, I only use my mountain bike on weekends. What do you recommend to change my wheels to tubeless system? I'd say do it. I mean, yeah. why wouldn't you do it? If you're riding both days of the weekend, two out of seven, that's pretty good. Tubeless is sweet. Go for it. Um, Jean Michael Esposo, uh, which one is better, hydraulic disc brake or mechanical? We mechanical. answered this yeah. above, didn't yeah. we? Yeah. Hydraulic. hydraulic. But I mean, cable's not bad, but hydraulic is the one. Yeah, brakes, they're good. Yeah. Liam you MTB, how do you persuade your parents to buy you a new bike? Oh. I know how to do this one. I know this one. Talk about it a lot. Tell yeah. them how much you're having fun watching your friends doing it and you wish you were I, doing I it. I was going to say, load the dishwasher every night and do all the dishes. Yeah, that too. That's yeah. a really good idea, yeah. actually. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Jackson, uh, can I have Fox Forks on the top shelf behind you? No. No. Um, Raphael Renard, can you make a video on how to change jockey wheels? Yeah. Yes. Um, Toby Goodridge, what is loam? Oh. Loam. Fantastic, by the looks of things. Yeah, loam is like, you know when you're skiing and yeah. you, they talk about powder and they get so stoked in it? Loam is the same for mountain bikes. It is just like... Soft surface material. Yeah, that just yeah. you're flowing Cuts over, it. you're cutting into it, it's drifting, it's going everywhere, and you're just having the best time in it. Yeah, you love loam. Yeah. He loves loam. Um, Scootering TNC, can Blake teach you guys how to backflip? I can already backflip. I, he could I mean, teach you for yeah, sure. Lean could, back. Yeah. It's Lean pretty back. easy. Yeah. Lean back. Um, Ryan Boyd, what are the best all round brake pads? I'm going to say metal. Sintered is what I use all year round, and yeah, they work. They stop me when I need to stop. There you go. We're through. We're through the quick fire round. We're cool. <sighs> Made it. Time for correct me if I'm wrong, and we're going to start with this one from Dara, who has got a little pile of rocks that he's turned into a nice little kicker. He's hitting this and wants to know is his jumping technique? spot on or not and actually scott we're pretty impressed with it aren't we we are things yeah. really see him but coming into the jump here it's a pretty big kicker yeah so soaks it up it nice pretty well lands it smooth any criticism i mean the criticism being really harsh yeah because he actually nails that but I think if he was going bigger, he might just want to absorb it just a little bit better with his body weight. Yeah, yeah. And sort of counteract that force when he lands so he doesn't get that dip in his body. Yeah. And that's how he can get bigger and bigger and come into it faster and faster. Yeah, that's what I'd say is that kicker, you could go really big off that. Yeah. Um, so I would say just progress in the way that you are and it's going to happen naturally, but it's looking pretty good. Yeah. Okay, now the next, correct me if I'm wrong, comes from Zenith and he is wanting to master the manual. So let's take a look at his video and see if we can give him some tips. Okay, there so he's he coming in. Oh, his weight's not really going far far enough back, is it? No, no. it's not quite getting there, and the head is dropping. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. that classic kind of thing where he drops the head, yeah. thinks that he's actually lifted up the front wheel, but yeah, he's no. not getting on. Gotta get that weight much further back and lower, so bend those knees, uh, and really exaggerate the movement, and you're gonna get the front end up. And slide those hips really as far back as you can, and that is how you're going to find the balance point. Okay. Now, don't forget that you can continue sending in your correct me if I'm wrong clips to ask at gmbn.com, and we'll take a look in the next edition of Ask GMBN. Yeah, and while you're here, don't forget to subscribe. You can click on the logo just here, and you'll get a new video every day of the week. And click right here for tips to actually master the wheelie. And you can click just here to find out, does practice actually make perfect? Of course, remember, if you have any questions, put them in the comments section down below, and there's one thing left to do. Right. Give it a thumb up, thumb like. up like.